Desert Island saddled against Side Super Colossal. Those two come off the turn. Nothing to separate those two with an eight to go. Island Town forges a short lead. It's now Island Town three parts of a length. Super Colossal second, Dividing Rod dropping out of it. Island Town beginning to draw away. Deep stretch Island Town by two and a half by three. Island Town will win this one going away. Super Colossal second after that battle midway and a photo for fourth. Horse racing today continues on HRTV. Walking Jaime with you in studio this afternoon. Yesterday on Saturday, there were three-year-old stakes races all across the country including the grade three Smarty Jones Stakes from Parks, which did go to Island Town for trainer Ian Wilkes. And Ian joins us on the line right now. Uh, Ian, first of all, congratulations on the victory yesterday in the Smarty Jones. How much progression has this gelding shown you now in, say, the last four months or so? Thanks. Yeah, that was, that was great yesterday. Um, the horse stepped up what we always believed in him. He's he's really has to, uh, progressed nicely for the last four months. Um, it took it was very slow over the winter because I couldn't get him to come around and I couldn't get a race in him in the winter. But the last four months he's just really taken every step we wanted, so which is very pleasing. And going back to uh, his most recent effort before the race at Parks, that was in the Indiana Derby. Did he just not care for the sloppy racetrack at all? No, I, I couldn't put it down for the sloppy. He, he, it was the first time I shipped him. Uh, like I said yesterday, um, the first time I shipped him to a race and he didn't handle it. Mm -hmm. And he he just lost it in the paddock. He just didn't. He was a different horse than he normally was. He got out of his comfort zone. And because he can be a little quirky that way in, in he he goes into a routine and he likes his routine. And once I changed his routine, he didn't he didn't handle it too well. So I had to I had to devise a plan, and that's where I took him to Skylight. So I got him away from his comfort zone of being at Churchill, tried something different. And then I shipped him to Parks um, four days early, so he could get comfortable with his surroundings. And going to to the race at Parks, Ian, he's shown that he's a pretty versatile horse. Uh, with some of his victories now, did you get the trip that you wanted uh, in the in the Smarty Jones on Saturday? Of course, he won. <laughs> <laughs> did the race play out though? He sat a little bit closer to the pace. He's come he's come from pretty far off the pace, sprinting seven furlongs at Churchill Downs, but he essentially went wire to wire, going a mile and a sixteenth in the Grade Three Matt Win. So he, I always like a horse like this that shows versatility in their running style. It uh, was the plan for Brian Hernandez to sit just off the pace. I left it up to Brian. Mm -hmm. I had the confidence in Brian. I spoke to Brian before the race. I and I and I told him, um, Brian, it's your race. Just let when they come, when they go, it's open. You ride your race. Just play it as it comes. And and because you know he knows the horse. You know he was uh, instrumental in getting his career underway. And I, I just left it up to him when he when he come out of the gates. And, and you know, and I thought he did a great job. And you mentioned he's instrumental in getting his career underway. Let's go back to his first career start because it's no secret that you usually do not have your first-time starters cranked up to run a very good effort. You're a trainer that likes to go ahead and let them build on each and every race. Your horse finished six, defeated 13 lengths in his career debut. He was 36-1 to behind a very nice runner for Steve Asmussen, as we see now in Holy Boss. And then he immediately comes right back and finishes second, uh, defeated ahead. Uh, did you always feel that this horse had had some good talent, even prior before his career debut last September? He did. You know, I, how good he was, I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. But he did have some talent mm -hmm. uh, because because he would show signs in the morning of of being very talented. But you couldn't. You had to be very careful with him because you couldn't. You couldn't raise your hand and hit him with a stick or something because he'd want to duck in and hit the fence. Mm -hmm. You know, you you just had to be very careful. You had to handle him with kid gloves, and, and that's why it's taken a while for this horse to come around. And, and even yesterday, if you watch that race, he was yeah. still stop starting the race, ducking in down the stretch. You know, his ears were pricked. He wasn't totally focused on what he was doing yet. Yeah, yeah. It seemed like he. 
He, he just went to that left lead just inside the 16th pole. Good thing for you guys is that he still was six and three quarters of a length clear. So uh, he was <laughs> able to go ahead and, uh, and still swap leads and look like he was playing around a little bit to now win three of his last four starts uh, in the Smarty Jones Stakes on, on Saturday. Ian, that was over at Parks, but you also had a horse running in the grade one Forgo Stakes uh, over at Saratoga. What did you think of Viva Mallorca's performance uh, trying to run down a very good sprinter in private zone? Oh, a real good effort, you yeah. know. Um, I, I thought one more jump, I got second, just got beat for second, and boy, you know, boy, what a nice sprinter that horse is. You know, he can he can go fast early and keep going fast at the end, private zone. He's, he's a good horse, and to, to make an indent there, you know, not a big one, but to, to get a piece of that, that, that was a very good performance for him. Well, it seems like he's always done pretty good at the seven furlong distance. Uh, do you have anything maybe penciled in uh, for Viva Mallorca at this point? N not yet. I, I might look. No, I haven't really. Mm -hmm. um, that was my main. I really pointed for the four go to get a real good race in that race. So uh, after that, after this now, I, I'll just... um look and see where we want to go with him from here and I'll talk to John Henrikson and just see which which direction we want to go with him and Ian back to Island Town have you have you thought uh, maybe what might be next for Island Town he is a three-year-old obviously and this is about the time of year that they might have to start facing older horses yeah just about um but I'm, am I taking back the parks again uh <laughs> Philadelphia Derby you know that's um right there he's run over the track and I might I might ship him back to that, and that's at the moment. That's it's very early, mm -hmm. just ran yesterday, but that's uh, what I've penciled in. Well, looking forward to today. You have another runner over at Saratoga. That's going to be race number five in the Smart and Fancy Stakes. And uh, Ian, you have Free as a Bird, a very nice mare sprinting on the turf. She won six races uh, in a row last year. How's she coming into the Smart and Fancy Stakes today? I couldn't be any happier with her. You know, mm -hmm. she she's doing fantastic. Actually, I think she's I think she's done better now. Coming in, she ran the fastest race of her life last time and mm -hmm. and got beat. And now we we've got another um, top three to run against that three year old filly of um, Kathleen O'Connell. She she looks like a, a very good filly. Um, but my filly, I couldn't be any more pleased the way she's coming into it. I won't I won't have any excuses this afternoon if we get beat. And it's a certain a surface that uh, she's certainly uh, over her best at. In five starts here at Saratoga, she's been in the exacta in four of them. Uh, Darrell Rosario just going to tell him to sit back and just try to make one run? Well, Joel's not riding oh, today. Oh, that's right. Joel, it was a spill yesterday, correct. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got, uh, I got an able replacement in Johnny Velasquez. So, um and Johnny, I'll, I'll tell him a little bit about the Philly and, mm -hmm. and with Johnny, you know, they know they know how to ride these yeah. guys. They know how to ride. I'll just tell him about the Philly, and mm -hmm. he'll know what to do. Always nice when you can get a Hall of Famer as a replacement rider. Ian, congratulations with the victory by Island Town in the Smarty Jones Stakes yesterday. He's now won three of his last four starts, collected his second graded stakes win. Thanks for joining us here on HRTV, and best of luck in the smart and fancy with Free as a Bird. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it.